Hello everybody, getting ready to do lesson 11.1 part 1 uh, classwork for pre-calculus math today. And for today's lesson you got 4 points in your notebook and 51 points will go on your classwork sheet. Have that out in front of you. Name, date, period, due date here for my onlineers. And today's bell work, teachers and students. Uh, we're going to simplify these rational expressions here. Uh, K, welcome back after five minutes. Uh, teachers, give your students about five minutes. Come back. And for today's solution for uh, the bell work, 5 minus x over 3x minus 15. Uh, this situation here, we can factor out, an, well, they factor out a negative 3, which you could do, or you could factor out a 3. And once you do that, um, you get 5 minus x, 5 minus x, so the, this will cancel here. That's why they factored out negative 3. And then you have 1 over, over negative 3, which is negative 1 third. X cannot equal 5. And then down here, you got a quadratic. So you factor this out, and you end up with a X minus 9, X plus 9. And you flip this around here, make your choice up here. At any rate, you come out with negative X minus 9. X cannot equal 9 in this situation. So that's your bell work for today. And to today's lesson, page 1, the limit concept. So we're going to get right into limits here. The notion of a limit is a fundamental concept of calculus. In this chapter, you will learn how to evaluate limits and how they are used in the two basic problems of calculus the tangent line problem and the area problem. So we're, we're going to use limits here for these two situations here, the tangent line and the area problem. And we're going to go right into an example. We're not going to waste any time here. Finding a rectangle maximum area. So you're given 24 inches of wire and are asked to form a rectangle whose area is as large as possible. What dimension should the rectangle have? So when we have, let W represent the width of the rectangle, and let L represent the length of the rectangle, because 2W plus 2L equals 24, right? Perimeter is 24. Two, two times your width plus two times your length will equal 24. So we do know that. So it follows that... And then here is a diagram of this situation. Length is in terms of width here. You have W, and then you have 12 minus W. So when you have that, it follows that your L will equal 12 minus W here, 12 minus W. So using this model for area, you can experiment with different values of W to see how to obtain maximum area. After trying several values, it appears the maximum area occurs when W equals 6. So playing around with numbers, as shown in the table, 6 is here. Here's our area. We get a 36 here. 6.1 be 35.99. And then you could actually punch that into your calculator. This is a table, obviously, from a calculator here. So it occurs when W equals 6, it's shown in the table. In limit terminology, you can say that the limit of A as W approaches 6 is 36. So this is written as the, uh, the limit of A, the limit of A as W approaches 6 equals 36 out here. So when we work this through here, we plug in our, our formula there in terms of W, 12W minus W squared equals 36, and then we go ahead and we solve for uh, W in that situation. Because <clears throat> we have a, we, we get a quadratic, right? So anyway, you solve that. You find your zeros on your graphing calculator, and that's what you'll come out with. Okay, let's try another one here, another max problem. You create an open box from a square piece of material, 24 centimeters on a side. So it is a square. You cut, well, this isn't a square, but the, from a square. 
you cut equal squares from the corners and turn up the sides. Okay, A, draw and label diagram represents the box. This will be part of your guided practice. And then B, verify that the volume V of the box is given by V equals 4X times 12 minus X squared. Okay, well, first things first, here is our uh, diagram here. We have 2 times 12 minus x, and then 2 times 12 minus x. So we, we have a, a square here. And we have uh, open, so we have 24 centimeters on the side. 2 times 12 is 24, 24 over here, then 24 minus x. So you cut an equal squares from the corners and turn up the side. So OK, here, here's our turned up corners here. <clears throat> And then verify that the volume V of the box is given by 4x multiplied by 12 minus x quantity squared. So to do that, and this continues your guided practice here, and then when we do that, our volume, remember, is length times width times height. So we're just verifying what has been given to us here. So we, we have 24 minus 2x squared times x. So we can factor out a 2, we get 12 minus x, 12 minus x uh, within uh, a bracket. And all of this is multiplied by x, so that'll give us our cube, which we're looking for a volume. And then this will simplify down to 4 times 12 minus x quantity squared times x, and then 4x times 12 minus x squared. So that's really taking what they've been giving us and then working that through to make sure that it pans out. And then C, the triangle has a maximum area when x equals 3 meters. Using a graphing calculator to complete the table and observe the behavior of the function as x approaches 3, use the table to find the limit A as x approaches 3. So by using our table up here, here's our table. And then when we go ahead and we extend this out, 3 here, uh, uh, we have 972, our volume is down here. And then as it approaches, see, 1, 10, 12.5, 10, 23, 10, 24. So you can see here as, as this function approaches 4, it creates a max because um, we have a relative max in this situation because it is a volume problem. So our, our limit as uh, x approaches 4 for volume would be 1024 here. This is what we'll yield here as our maximum volume from that. And then use the graphing utility to graph the volume function. Verify that the volume is max when x equals 4. So by graphing that on your graphing calculator, you will you shall see this uh, local max here, and then this up here will be should be a four, one, two, three. Well, I guess not. I mean, these must not mean uh, uh, when x equals four. So it'll be right here. So your f of x will equal four when when x equals four in this situation, which is right here. So see one two three four, and then up here this will give you you have 1,200 uh, cubic units here, so it'll be I don't know whatever that is 1024 or something like that. So that that would be what that is. <clears throat> okay, and then this would be four. Okay, moving along here, definition of a limit. That'd be nice. Uh, if f of x becomes arbitrarily close to a unique number l as x approaches c from either side, then the limit of f of x as x approaches c is l. This is written as the limit of f of x as x approaches c equals l. So that would be the way that you would you would put all of this language into this uh, more uh, mathematical kind of symbol. There. So let's try another example, estimating a limit numerically. Use the table to estimate the limit numerically. So we have the limit here of uh, 3x minus 2 as x approaches 2. So let f of x equal 3x minus 2. Then construct a table that shows the values of f of x for two sets of x values, one set that approaches 2 from the left, 
and one that approaches two from the right. So this is what it will look like here. As you approach it from the left, you get this, and then as you approach it from the right, you get this here. And then what's this number here? So the only thing left in here kind of like is kind of like, well, I'll let you <laughs> guess that. So from the table, it appears that the closer x gets to 2, the closer f of x gets to 4. So you can estimate that the limit to be 4. So in, for this situation here, the limit would equal 4 here. As x approaches 2, f of x will equal 4. Okay, so let's try one. Uh, in these exercises, we'll complete the table, use the result to estimate the limit numerically, determine whether the limit can be reached. So we have a limit here of 5x plus 4 as x approaches 2. And then we have here for x, we have these numbers up here. And they're in increments of tens, hundreds, thousands. So they're one thousandths of a number. So the limit is reached. Okay, if it is reached, and then here's the table here for this. So at 1.9 it's that, and at 2 it would be 14. So when x equals 2, f of x would equal 14 in that situation. 2.1 would be 14.5. So determine whether the limit can be reached, and it can be reached. And so, and it is 14 for that solution here. And then down here, uh, I, le I leave that up to you students to do that. The limit is reached. <clears throat> okay, moving on to our next example here, estimating a limit numerically. Use a table to estimate the limit numerically. So we have a limit here as x approaches 0 for this uh, expression here. Let f of x equals x over uh, quantity radical x plus 1 minus 1. Then construct a table that shows the values of f of x for two sets of x values here. So here is your actual graph of that. One set approaches 0 from the left, and then one that approaches 0 from the right. So you're approaching uh, uh, 0 from the left, and then 0 from the right in this situation here. <clears throat> at x equals 0. f is undefined at x equals 0. Okay. Well, that seems to be about right. Again, here is the graph of this here, of this function here. This is the graph for that. And then here's the table for that. So when x equals 0, what do we have here? I mean, yeah, 1.999 is 5, and then 2.005. So what would you think there? I mean, from your table, it, it appears that the limit would be 2. This limit is reinforced by the graph of f. So here's your graph, and it pretty much shows that here. Okay, when x equals 0, f of x would equal 2. Okay, so we're going to try one. Um, complete the table and use the result to estimate the limit numerically. Determine whether the limit can be reached. So we have a limit here as x approaches negative 1. And then we have x plus 1 over x squared minus x minus 2. And then from that, we, we develop a table here. And from that table, here is our original function. When, when we uh, solve this limit, we come up with negative 1 over 3. So um, we have an error on your calculator here when x equals uh, uh, negative 1. And then for uh, down here, so it, it's when x equals negative 1, it's going to make this 0 here in the numerator. And then this will be probably, no, it comes out to uh, negative 1 over 3. So the limit is not reached here because you have an error message here when x equals negative 1. So it's the limit is not reached. So this limit would not be valid here for as x approaches negative 1. And that is 11.1, uh, part 1, pre-calculus math. My email, animated PowerPoint math video at all.com for, uh, for course materials and or questions. Thank you very much.